Hi and welcome back to video 15. This time we are dealing with guards and um, we are making an endpoint guard for put requests, so especially for our um, updating a user's profile request to verify that the user who is trying to update a profile is actually the user himself, so that you are not allowed to update um, the profile of a different user than yourself. Our video structure is as always. First, we have a look at our video outcome, then we write a user story for it, and then we implement it and close it. Let's look at the video outcome. You can see we have our update one request, so we want to make a put request and update the profile data from one person. And we are trying to update this from user two with a param, and we are not having an authorization token or anything or JWT. And now you see we are unauthorized because we don't have a JWT. Um, and so if we add now a JWT token to it from a user, and this is um, the user with the ID 7, so we can just add this here to our BR token, and we hit send, then we have a forbidden resource because we try to update the profile of user 2, but we are user 7, and so if we try to do this with user 7, we can see if we give him, for example, the username 4 and not 3, then we have updated the user profile, and now we can do it to 5, and so on. So we val validate that the user who is requesting the change in the user profile actually is the user. Let's look at our story. Here we are in video 15, and we want to have an endpoint guard for our user controller update1 function. So it's very simple and very basic. So as a technical lead, I want that only the user himself is able to update his own profile, so no one else can. And the acceptance criteria are we want to have a new guard that verifies that the user who is trying to update a user's information actually is the user. So we can do this very simple by um, checking the JWT that is attached to the request. If there the ID is also the ID of the user that he's trying to change. So we have a parameter ID um, in our route or in our IP in our request. And if this matches the ID from the JWT from our user, then he's allowed to do it because it's the same user. So we can just move the story to doing and start by looking in our code and we see we are here in our folder. We can make a git status and we are on our branch develop so we can just say git flow feature start video 15. And then we can go into our backend folder, like the API folder. You see, we switch to our branch video 15 and just go into our source folder. And then we have our user controller here. And we are in our update one method here. And so at the moment, I can just hit this endpoint for user seven. And I can say I change this username or this name of the user to with it two. You see, when I get in return, the new user or with the name changed and we don't want this because now just everyone can update every user so it's like a completely mess and you don't know who's actually doing what and is he allowed to do it so what we want we want to all use also here our uh, guard like here so we can use the same annotation from nest.js use guards and then we need our JWT aufguard because this um, extends our normal aufguard and we use with this our JWT strategy. So we validate if there is um, a JWT in our request and then we add the user to our payload. So we can just simplify this here a bit. So we just say payload.user. Or not just let it be and so we need to add a new guard here so we can just call it user is user guard dot ts and then we can implement our logic so what we need is we want to export a class and this is called user is user guard and we implement our can activate so function with a boolean and 
and we have to import this from NestJS common. Don't know why this never works. We also need here an injectable. And maybe you now finds it. No. But this is also coming from the NestJS common package. And so now he wants to have a can, uh, can activate. So now you see he wants to have a can activate function that returns either a boolean synchronous or asynchronous promise or observable. So for this to don't show any errors. We just need a function that says can activate and this should return of course a boolean or in our case we can say we want to return a boolean or a promise boolean or an observable boolean and we need also here our user service so we can go or add on our constructor, our user service. And we can just inject it here with forward ref. And then add here our user service and say we have private user service type user service and this we need because we are using also in our user service some guards or something from our out package here so we need to make a forward ref in which direction we import or inject something so in our um, can activate we need our context from nest.js and this is our execution context and you see this is also coming from the nest.js common package and this will so we have with this we have free uh, access to the complete request that the user is making we can look have a look at this now so we can say const request is our context and then we switch to http and then we get our request and now we can just console lock it and then you will see we are having our complete request here and then we can do something with it and so it's just return true so that we can test it and then we add our logic here and for this to fire or to actually work we need to add our user as user guard here so first it goes into our jwt off guard which extends our normal off guard and add to our JWT style tree here our user payload to the request object and check if there is a JWT and if it's valid and uh, it sign or it checks against our JWT secret. So if we actually uh, assign assigned it now, if we hit this request, we are unauthorized because we are not having a JWT attached to our request. So we don't see anything here. And for this to work, we can use our login. We get an access token, so a JWT, and we add this here with authorization. We say we have a token, just copy it here. And now if we hit our request, you see that it makes our normal request, so we are authenticated. And you see here, we are console logging out our complete request. So we now have access to everything that we added here. So this is our user that we added in our JWT uh, guard here, in our strategy here. We also have somewhere our um, request object or our param, params that we need 
Um, let's see. We have here our param, so see we are going for ID7. So this is here our param, and so we can check if this param here, so the user ID7, is the same that our user ID from the JWT that the user is sending. And so it's the same, then we can we verify that the user is actually the user and that he's allowed to update his own profile in this case. So we can get the params. And here we can just say it's now the request.params. And for this, just to see that you see it, that this works, we log it out and we run this request again. Now you see when it's compiled here, it's just adding the params. So now we can just go with return because we want to return an observable. Um, our user service, we want to use our find one method. And there we want to search for our user. And this is another thing that we need here. We have our user, type user. And this is our request.user.user. .user. And we import this user here. And then we go for find one by ID and pipe our outcome. And then we map it. And so we get the user object from the database in return. And then we can verify that our user is the user or that is allowed to and so we need to import map and then this code we will never reach we have um, like a permission so we can say has permission for example to um, get to access this endpoint and so the default is false and we say just if our user dot id so this user here is the same than our params dot id and because params are in a string format we have to switch this to a number or convert it to a number and then we can set permission to true and then we just return it here. We return the user and, and we return also our has permission. So if we go through it, we first get our request, then we get our params from our request and our user object. And then we search in our user service, so in our database for the exact user from our JWT here, this user, and that is extracted with our JWT guard and our JWT strategy. And then we use this user to check if our user ID from our database is the same that he's trying to update, so the parameter. And if this is the case, then it's true, and we give him permission and return it as true. And if it's not the case, then we are not going into this here, and we are just saying false, and the request is um, aborted because it's he's not allowed to do this. So four or one, I think. So we can see here with our JWT, this is from our user seven. And we can just go here and check this, and we can see by copy and paste this JWT into here. We are from user ID 7. So if we update now the username to username 3 or update name 3, then we see it works. But if we try to do this, for example, for username 2, then we, it says for free forbidden resource because we are trying to update the user 2, but actually we are user 7 in our JWT, so this is not allowed to work. So this is basically all the metric and you can see it here we are going for the parameter 2 but in our JWT it says we are user 7 so it turns this permission and this is false and so the guard on our controller 
um, says false and is not letting um, us do to execute this. So this is basically everything that we did. So we can just save our files. We can remove um, console log statements. Yeah, this looks fine. And then we can just add it to our um, files. Or for example, we also can add this updated request here and save it. And then we can export this here again into our um, Git repository. And then we edit again all our files. And we say we have a commit message video 15. And this is uh, added user validation for updating or for endpoint update one to verify that the user who is requesting the update is allowed to PG is the user himself. So we push it. And then we can just finish the feature. So we say git flow feature finish. And this will now merge it back into our develop branch. And we can just close our story here. So we have a new guard that verifies that our user is trying to update a user is actually the user. So we can close this and move it to done. Because we now um, have deleted our branch locally and also remotely. And we are back on branch develop. And so we push our develop branch and everything is fine.